Hello everyone, welcome back to Daniel Speaks, and in today's video we're going to talk about Pixar. We'll talk about their history, their current state, and how they went woke. So buckle up and let's get started. Pixar Animation Studios, commonly known as Pixar, is an American animation studio based in Emeryville, California. It was founded in 1986, one of the three founding members being Steve Jobs, and it was created with the goal of making computer animated films. Pixar revolutionized the animation industry by introducing groundbreaking techniques and storytelling approaches. In 1995, Pixar released its first full-length feature film, Toy Story, directed by John Lasseter. It became a massive success, not only commercially, but also critically, as the first ever fully computer-animated feature film. Since then, Pixar has produced a string of highly acclaimed and successful films that have captured the hearts of audiences worldwide. Pixar movies have gained recognition for their groundbreaking narratives, profound emotional resonance, and state-of-the-art animation techniques. These films frequently delve into subjects like companionship, familial bonds, individual development, and the boundless potential of imagination. What sets Pixar apart from the other studios is their exceptional talent in crafting stories that captivate not only young people, but also adults. Some of Pixar's most popular films include Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, Up, Inside Out, and Coco. These films have not only received critical acclaim, but they've also achieved significant commercial success, grossing billions of dollars at the box office worldwide. If you're watching this video, you're probably a fan of Pixar, or at least you were at some point, because as universally beloved as this animation studio has been, lately they've come under fire for the same reason as their parent company, Walt Disney, by becoming infected by the so-called woke mind virus. The term woke mind virus is not a widely recognized or scientifically established concept. However, it is sometimes used in certain political or cultural contexts to describe the perception that some ideas associated with social justice movements or other progressive causes are spreading rapidly and influencing people's thinking, and that they're negatively affecting society and stifling free speech. The term woke gets thrown around a lot these days, but why are people specifically saying this about Pixar? In 2006, Pixar merged with the Walt Disney Company, forming a collaboration that resulted in the continued success and the release of such films as WALL-E, Toy Story 3, Inside Out, Coco, and Soul. And this means that this company is now owned and operated by the Walt Disney Corporation. Being the world's biggest and most successful entertainment brand, Disney wants to appeal to as many people as possible, and this can even mean chasing recent trends. Audiences today expect more from the stories they consume. They appreciate films that go beyond mere entertainment and explore deep themes and messages. Pixar has responded to this demand by incorporating socially relevant narratives into their films, which allows them to connect with a wider audience and resonate on a more profound level. Pixar also acknowledges that diverse perspectives in the creative process can lead to richer storytelling. And by fostering an inclusive and diverse work environment, Pixar ensures that different voices and experiences are represented within their films. This approach helps them create more authentic and relatable stories that address a variety of social issues. Films like Coco, which celebrate Mexican culture and the importance of family, and Soul, which explores existential questions in the pursuit of one's passions. These are some of the films I mentioned which have received critical acclaim and resonated with audiences worldwide. And the success of these films reinforces Pixar's commitment to telling meaningful and inclusive stories. Pixar is going for diversity and inclusion, and these things are not bad on the surface. But many parents of children who watch these movies start to get nervous when they perceive Pixar as including themes in their stories that are not safe for children. One of the parents' main concerns being the inclusion of LGBTQ plus characters and themes in their children's stories. Let's talk about the movie Lightyear. Before this movie had been released, it would already release controversy for Disney once again leaning into an older and established character rather than starting out with something new. But another reason was for its inclusion of a lesbian character and the presence of a same-sex kiss. And just like you'd expect, this scene invited backlash from conservatives who saw this as Disney's attempt to shape children's minds. And it was also seen as a disingenuous attempt to appeal to the woke crowd, offering just enough representation and getting the score social points, but making the scene easy to cut out for the release in an international market such as China and the Middle East. People were upset on both sides, and for Disney once again trying to appeal to everyone, they ended up just making everyone angry. 
with some people saying that the representation didn't go far enough, and others saying that it was just awkwardly crowbarred in and completely unnecessary. Many people also criticized the film, saying that the brave, heroic, straight white male character was constantly undermined and made to look like a fool, always in need of saving from his strong black female co-lead, and this was just another way for them to pander to the woke crowd. There was also the recent movie Strange World, which many people also claimed was way too woke. It shows a strong, rugged explorer type character who is the grandfather, and he's always shown as being stubborn and hard headed. There is a character who married a black woman, and the son who's openly gay. There's a disabled dog, we see characters in wheelchairs, and an unambiguously gay romance, and many themes that people would refer to as woke. There's also their most recent release, Elemental, a movie that many people referred to as cliche and over generic. This film was very heavy handed and would feature themes of structural racism, immigration, and interracial relationships. And this would be the film to feature Disney and Pixar's first non binary character, something many argued was completely unnecessary. All of these releases not only drew criticism, but also massively flopped to the box office, collectively losing over $900 million. Many people said that the presence of diversity didn't ruin the films, but it was more due to the lazy writing, generic stories, and Pixar not living up to the same magic they once did. Because instead of creating amazing stories that touch our hearts with high emotional resonance, the creators chose to replace this great storytelling with old cliches and thinking that diversity and inclusion could make up for a lack of effort. You can't write boring stories and then just say, well the lead character was black and a minority and queer, so you just have to like it. To understand why Pixar has gone in this direction, we also have to understand the landscape of Hollywood today. The movie industry faces several challenges and operates within a dynamic landscape shaped by various factors. The rise of streaming services such as Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, and Disney+, Plus, this has had a huge transformation in the way that people consume movies and TV shows. The shift has disrupted the traditional distribution models and created new opportunities and challenges in the industry. Streaming platforms have become major players in content production, leading to the increased competition for traditional studios. Franchise films, sequels, and cinematic universes have become dominant forces in the industry. Studios often rely on established intellectual properties and with big budget blockbusters to generate significant box office revenue. And while these films can be financially successful, it's also led to concerns about the originality and the diversity of storytelling. The movie industry has increasingly become global in nature, with international markets playing a huge crucial role in the box office success. Hollywood studios now target international audiences more than ever, leading to the development of films with broader cultural appeal and increased emphasis on localization and international co-productions. One of the criticisms caused by this is the fact that Hollywood constantly has to kowtow to China. They often cut out certain parts for the Chinese release, They'll insert Chinese characters and companies just for the sake of appealing to China because of such a huge box office share. Viewers also have increasingly diverse options for entertainment, from movies and TV series, online videos, video games, and social media. This has led to a more fragmented media landscape, making it harder for individual films to capture the widespread appeal and compete for audience engagement. The phrase, go woke, go broke, is often used as a criticism or a cautionary statement suggesting that companies or individuals that embrace progressive or socially conscious ideas, those companies may face negative or financial consequences. The implication is that focusing heavily on issues like diversity and inclusion can alienate audiences or lead to a decline in profitability. While some ventures that emphasize progressive values may face challenges, others have found commercial success by tapping into underrepresented markets and attracting diverse audiences. In recent years, movies like Black Panther have dominated the box office, and other movies like Crazy Rich Asians, which featured an all-Asian cast. Furthermore, surveys and studies have consistently shown that younger audiences who prioritize social values are more likely to support companies and brands that align with their beliefs. This indicates that embracing social consciousness can be an effective strategy for connecting with these customers and building long-term loyalty. So to answer the simple question this video set out to explore, how did Pixar get so woke? It really just boils down to one simple answer, and that's money. If diversity and inclusion are the trends, and audiences demand to see themes that are considered woke in their storytelling, then these are the stories that we'll see reflected on screen. The movie business is just that. It's a business, and studios need to make a profit to stay alive. 
It seems that these so-called woke stories are not going anywhere anytime soon, but it also seems that these themes themselves are not what's actually ruining movies and TV shows. What's actually ruining them is when these themes are substituted for great writing and storytelling. What we really need is to get back to things like character development, imagination, and just simply telling good stories. So tell me, what's your opinion of this? Do you think Pixar is too woke? Do you think they've become lazy and stagnant with their recent releases? Tell me down in the comments. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more videos like this one. You can also check out some of my other videos here and I will see you very soon with another episode of Daniel Speaks.